I, I'm very uh, honored and uh, in awe to speak to you. I will say that <laughs> <laughs> right at the onset there. You know, I was at the show last night. So, I mean, qu a quick question about, sure. about that show or okay. just about like watching you live for the first time for me. Now, you know, do you come away like this morning with, uh, do you, do, did you have moments that you remember today? Yes. You did? Yes. You know, what, what my, I generally talk not so much. And as I've gotten to be a band leader, I've talked more and more just to retain, and as the audience gets physically closer and closer. Yeah. It's kind of necessary to have a verbal contact with them. Do I do know some words? Yeah, yeah. I just don't go blue do blue do do. No, no. I got I got a vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have a friend who said, uh, "Ron Maestro, the audience is coming back to live again. Yeah. And the people who come to see you, they want to hear you. They yeah. want to hear your voice. Right. <laughs> yeah. And they want to talk. They want to hear you verbalize feelings. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And, and so I decided to do. A little more introduction to the song, sure. A little lighthearted humor that it's just not just all grim. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's, there's some there's some happiness up here, which yeah. makes it easier yeah. to play this music. Yeah. And so I've come up with a little few things that kind of engage them. Yeah. And the New York audience love that stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I said the other day, uh, if I got three quick questions, and here's number two, and, and all the New York oh, yeah. New York gets that. Man. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But it helps them get in my pocket. Right. Sure. Yeah. And I want that verbal connection to tie them into my thought process as I planned the program two days ago. Uh-huh. So you do it that quick. Oh yeah. 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 You know, and when I have them, it makes planning the program easier. And also like I, I think that there's something I notice about watching jazz and about uh the experience of it. There I, there's always something interesting to me going all the way back where, you know, when someone's soloing and and everyone else just literally hanging around smoking a cigarette almost, mm -hmm. right I, i've noticed it well i think i've literally seen that waiting thing and there's a uh, not a politeness but there's a respect in the in the jazz room that that seems a little austere right so i think that when you talk and, and open and open your heart just a little bit it brings people into a different space mm -hmm. the respects get d deeper in a way well i know if i can go back a minute uh one of the reasons that when I do a solo piece, I want the band on the bandstand. I want the audience to see the musicians are completely engaged in what this solo person is playing. Yeah. They're not on their iPad, they haven't gone to the bar, yeah, they aren't yeah, doing yeah. whatever they need to do, they haven't, they haven't disappeared. And once the musician leaves the bandstand, people's focus is on him leaving, Right. not necessarily what's going on as he's leaving. Sure. And once I get them, to, the bands to be involved with the band playing. The audience responds to that. I said, man, I don't know what that guy's going to do by himself, but these other guys, they want to watch. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. Everyone was right. connected. I want them to be up on the bandstand emotionally. Yeah. And once I get them to see, in this case, Russell Malone and Don Vega enjoying or being pleased or being amazed at or questioning how I do that or what music I'm trying to do, they're already, already, they're already there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And, and the image of the TV where they had the musicians puffing on cigarettes or what would have, that's just for TV, that's just for that this separate audience. Yeah. We're playing with people who are breathed just like us. Sure. Yeah. I'm trying to find their breathing rhythm more or less to help them, help me find things to do that makes them hold that breath. Yeah. Well, I noticed. Yeah, I noticed. It was when, great, man. Yeah, yeah. And when you're playing, like I was, I was wondering that last night. Like, do you are you aware of how you're breathing and when oh, yeah. you breathe? Yes, man. I, that's a, it's a sentence. I got a sentence going. Yeah, yeah. And these are my commas, my right. my exclamation points, and my yeah. questions, or, or my. I sometimes I just kind of just scrape the bass. I said, I just go frustrated. I can't figure out what these notes are coming yeah, out. Yeah, they see that. Right. And I'm breathing just like they're breathing. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. And when I let it go, you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and like uh but but like in terms of what I, I was bringing up like about last night was there a point of departure where you know because i've heard you speak about this and i and I, I speak about it in in some of what i do when i do comedy that you know once you lay down the foundation of what you're doing right which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. essential yeah structure foundation form and form then you know then you can take off a little bit yeah and and that's where you don't know what's gonna happen absolutely well, well you, you have an idea because you're planning for there's a context yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but you know, it's like a gift. Yes. 
right? And, yeah, I'm afraid <laughs> that I'm afraid to accept sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you can't understand. It? Yes, mm. and I don't want to. I don't want to know too much more than what I do. Right. You know, one of the hard things about teaching, Mark, for me, is students would ask very, very important questions. That's their job. Yeah. Right. And my job is to respond as best I can. Yeah. At that moment, to answer that specific question. Right. But sometimes those questions are so penetrating. Yeah. And and and, and uh, so uh, uh, amazingly naive. Yeah. That they're very powerful. Sure. And to answer those questions, it makes me think about, well, how do I do that? Yeah. And why do I do that? Yeah. Mark, I love the mystery of not knowing that. You can't explain that moment. But though. they ask. I know, right. And I got to find a way to have them understand that that's okay. I don't have an answer either, but I try to do it every night. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's like, why I go to work every night. That, but that's like the fleeting gift of it. Yes, of course. And, they, and, and once they see that, they come back tomorrow night. Yeah. Are you going to do it again? Yeah, who knows? It's called a fan club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're waiting. They're, they're, you're like an astronaut. They yes. want to see if you get to space. That's correct. Yeah, but like, because when it happens to me, like sometimes you know in that moment that that's, if, if it wasn't recorded, the, oh, oh, the only witnesses I have is me and them. And, and I love that. I, me too. I, you, know, you know, once it's gone, yeah. it's not really gone. Yeah. Because it's, it's gone it's, that they can't reproduce it. Tomorrow. That's right, right, but it's been released. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So, d is that how you sort of? I, I was trying to think about from from the beginning. So you you know you've been on you know two thousand two hundred summer records, yeah, and, and, si I, and six and six. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I have to I have to assume on some level this is uh, an ongoing conversation. Yes, that you have to that in in uh, that this is not just like this is my work or this is you know this record or that record. This is one continuous movement through my life, yes. through the music, through yes. my expression. My and, experiences. And it's all out there. Yes, yes. So going back like to where when you grew up, when the moment that you decided that the music was going to be for you, do you remember that? Uh, you remember it as a calling? Well, you know, let, let's not go back that far. <laughs> yeah. I'm celebrating my 85th birthday this year, yeah. so you asked me to subtract a whole lot of years. Yeah. Having said, if you can go back... Uh, just an, an example was 1963-ish or so. Well, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in the, I was in the, with a group. I was, uh, I was playing music with a bunch of guys. Yeah. And part of the song had some tags at the end of the song. They just kind of keep playing the same eight bars over and over and over and over, you know? Yeah. And, and at some point, I heard some different notes. Yeah. I heard some different changes. And this, uh, some guys in the band, uh, they didn't think that was okay. Yeah. They had another view of, you know, one six one six four five one. Yeah, they were they were happy with that. Right, Mark, I was no longer happy with that. I knew that I knew what that was. I had already done that. Right on on that record or on that gig. Sure, but I'm hearing another concept. I said, wait a minute, there must be another way to find a set of notes that makes not just the music feel different, but makes the band feel different. Yeah, and then and, you, you chased it. Yeah, and, and I was doing that, and these guys were reluctant. And it got to the point, man, where we were ready to go outside about this thing, man. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, down, wait a minute. And, and somebody said, guys, it's yeah. only a B-flat fucking seven, okay? Yeah, yeah. Just sit down with that stuff, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, no, man, it's important to have this guy understand that why would I allow myself to be just a palm tree and this guy gets all the desserts? Right. No, I want, to be, I want to be in front of the palm tree for a change. Right. So Rhythmically, harmonically, all that stuff. Yeah. And I was willing to go outside with this guy because it got down to that kind of personal level. Yeah. Then I realized, Mark, if the music means so much to me, if my point of view for me is now I found it so valid and it's so concrete and I can see where I can go with this, yeah. if it means making that really happen for me to go outside with this person's and duke it out in the street while this like, looking like Linus and, and, and this Peanuts, yeah. I'm willing to do that. Yeah. I said, well, okay, well, if that's what I'm feeling, I got to work on what that is. Yeah, and you, you might as well work it out with a drummer yeah. as opposed to with your fists. <laughs> yes, yeah, or, or a stick, whatever, <laughs> or a, a baseball. Because, like, I noticed, like, even just, you know, kind of getting, trying to get up to speed, that the difference between, you know, just for you, between, like, 1961, you know, with Eric Dolphy and mm -hmm. 1969 with, uh, you know, Uptown Conversation, mm -hmm. stylistically, mm -hmm. is profound. So, like, when you're coming up, 
I mean, do you know where you're sort of entering the the the, the sort of legacy of jazz before you? Do you know? Well, you know, I, I think I can listen to that now and analyze that. When I had just been, this, this, I called the big intermission. Yeah. My students recommended certain records for me here because I had never heard them since Your time. records. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I can see I was developing something that I did not have the vocabulary to express. Yeah. And some of the, that Eric Dolphy record to wear. I knew what was happening, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I didn't know whether I wanted to pursue that because I thought that maybe it was more Eric's baseball to carry, you know? Right. But I knew that I had an impact then on my note choices, it changed Eric's immediacy of doing what he's going to do. Uh-huh. I didn't understand the power of the bass at that time. I just knew it did something. Right. So that's it. It's it's like harnessing the power for yeah. yourself. Understanding. Yeah, yeah. That I can control all these items, man, by just the right note, man. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah, yeah. as I as I tell you this, I, I sit here, man. Fortunately, I'm sitting down. Yeah. Because it's the kind of thought that knocks you on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you mean tell me if you play F sharp on this note? It stops the band, yes. Yeah. And you saw that the other night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, it, it, cause like I, I've tried to, you know, consider, you know, that, you know, knowing that you started in classical and mm-hmm. knowing that, you know, you still play classical at mm-hmm. times and then you, you bring what you've learned from your other experience in music to yes. class. yes. That because I'm sort of a student of it, like I'm no like you know, jazz to me is 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 almost too big a universe for mm-hmm. me to wrap my brain around. But you know, I I can listen to it and I listen to it a lot, and I know certain guys and I know certain things, but I don't know how the whole structure of things works. I can't talk too many numbers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a a guitar player. I can do one four five, yeah, maybe yeah. one other thing, mm-hmm. but, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. So when you put a foundation down of classical, you know, what does that give you? Well, it, it, two things. Yeah, it gives you a sense of what structure is and how really important it is mm. to the success of this particular melody. Yeah, or this set of chords. Right. And the other thing it gives me. Yeah, is the understanding if I change one note of this sequence, it's now my sequence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm starting to appreciate that. Right. You know? So, so when you were playing, like you started playing cello. Yes. And and in the opportunity came to play bass, you uh, you already knew the music, right? Well, I understood the consequences. Yeah, but the reason I switched instruments had nothing to do with music in of itself. Yeah. Ultimately, Mark, it was the, 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 the situation where I wanted to be treated equally. Of course, that affects music when you got orchestras and satin jazz groups, but I just wanted to be equally in terms of the op- opportunities that were available to me. I want to be able to say, no, I don't want to do that gig. Right. Rather than waiting for an invitation that never came. Right. So, so you know, you found yourself pushed out. Yes, not not be, wanting. Not getting opportunities. Yeah, that's correct. But pr- not because of your talent. No. Just no. because of race. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that's an interesting story in the doc. I liked it where, you know, uh, it was that there was they, they lost their bass player and there were no other options. Yeah. You realize, like, well, I can take that. I can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I was prepared. I practiced like everybody. I, I practiced X number of hours a day. I knew the library. I was getting some real skill. I was showing some real unique talent in, in interpreting the music. Yeah. I couldn't understand why that wasn't enough anymore. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, when the bass player graduated, I said, well, one from one leaves zero. I can fill that slot. And this and, wasn't in Manhattan. This was no, where? In, in, in New York City. Oh, it was in New oh, York City. It was in um, Cast Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19, see, yeah. Is it graduate school now? No, no, no. I was a f- senior in high school, man. Oh, it was high school, right. Uh, 1952, uh, 50, something Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So by the time you get right going there. with jazz, though, like, like big band was kind of done, right? It's less, less popular. By the time you got in, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and you had a lot of cats that were coming out of big band starting to do the, the bop thing, right? Mm-hmm. Bird, Dizzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were in big bands back then, though. With Lester Young, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coleman Hawkins. Right, right. Coleman Hawkins. Yeah. You got to play with him, right? Yeah, man. It's called the Hawk Flies. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, he came by my, my apartment with the Chrysler 300 series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he said, and uh, you bring my doorbell and said, Mr. Carter. I said, oh, man, my wife. Who was that? <laughs> and I go, said, uh, I'm Coleman Hawkins, and we have this recording uh, within an hour from now. Can you come to the date with me? He's got in the car, and we we'll do about the Rudy Van Gelders. Yeah, in Jersey. Yeah, I made yeah. this record with Tommy Flanagan. Yeah. And, and 
Eddie Lockjaw Davis. I said, man, I'm, if heaven is better than this, send me a brochure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, and that's the way it kind of went sometimes. Yeah, huh? I can't believe this. I can't believe that I'm here because these guys, no other choices. Right. And who was your first gig with? The first big gig was Chico Hamilton. And he came out of that, right? Yeah. Like Count Basie and some other stuff? Absolutely, from California style. Yeah, and what's the difference? California and New York. I think it's the the aggressiveness of the music. In New York? players. Yeah, they they just go, go hell-bent. Wherever right, it is, right. let's it, just play loud and fast. You and got whole going. people here. In, 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 in California, it's fewer people. Well, you, and got, you, you got the palm down. trees. And, 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 ocean. and it's, it's a great environment. Yeah. But New York has another edge to it. And, and, that's to, and, and seeing the... the those edge players always edge toward New York. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. was the drummer in that one? Uh, Chico was the drummer in that band, but Charlie Persip was a band, recording band. And oh, yeah, right, right. He came out of Dizzy Gillespie's band. Okay. So the big band was still flourishing, but on a different level. Uh, the, most studios in New York had, had bands, big bands. Yeah. I miss those days. I, yeah. I wanted to hear how the arrangements work and, and kind of what kind of sound did they get. You know, Can I be in the band with 16 guys and have the bass player be as, as as necessary yeah as the band leader or the piano player in those bands well starting next week yeah you're doing i got it, a 16 huh? piece band i call it my 16 piece quartet yeah and in this band it's the top of the cream of the crop in new york yeah i'm looking forward to directing literally these six, these 15 guys and to the way I think they should play this music. Interesting. So, and man, it's going to be great, man. Yeah, it's got to be great. So, but you've, you've, but over the years, you've done different versions of big bands. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I, I just never stopped to understand what I was doing. And that's back to our earlier question. Mm. It seems to me that the luster and, and the, 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 the mystery of this cape yeah. that the jazz players have, yeah. in this case, jazz players, that, that doesn't allow them at that moment to understand what took place and how they're able to make this phrase just show up out of theoretically air. Yeah. I love not knowing that. But it's the only thing. I'd but that's not enough. It's time to figure out how I can do this again. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, at least most of it. Yes, absolutely. Right? Whatever I can recall. But when you, like, in terms of, like, when you're coming into it, like, because I can't even... Like, I can't imagine what, what it must have been like when big bands were the popular music. Yeah, man. You, you know, and, and it, how many people in a, gen, is it 16 in a? In, a, in, in my band, yes. But it, like in a standard big band? Yeah, f f five saxophones, four trumpets, four reeds, four for rhythm. Yeah. It's yeah. Like 16, 15, depending on the arrangements. Now, did you go back and try to like sort of at least deconstruct like Ellington or Basie or no. any of those cats? No. You don't, you know? No, I, I wasn't that interested in that kind of construct. Mm. I was interested in the results of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get the, the, the saxophone section's riff and, and, and the, right. the guitar yeah, yeah, player yeah, yeah, playing yeah. chomp, yeah. chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah. Just, just, just the combination of these various spices and how personal they made the band sound, like Count Basie's band sound different from Duke Ellington's band than Stan Kenton's band. So you focused on the sound of the player. Yeah. You weren't that uh, interested in the composition necessarily. Not necessarily. No, the form is, is relative to everybody. It's got the same kind of form concept. Yeah, that's right. It this, comes from the same well in a way. Yeah, but Duke hired players who gave him his sound from that specific player. Yeah, yeah. Harry Carney, yeah. you know, and Jimmy Blanton. They added a certain spice that Duke needed for his band. Right, right. And that appealed to me. So wow. This this guy Duke Allen, he knows what sound he needs to make his band do, what Duke wants it to do. Right, that's amazing to me. So that that's what so that that, that got in your head. It's like I got a sound. Yeah, yeah. How am I going to get that sound out? Yeah, and how can I make it happen every night? Right. Yeah. You get the consistency thing is important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to open the bass case and say, this night I'm going to sound like last night because the sound was perfect to me. I, that's what I'm trying to get my students to understand. Right. And it, it, it's not everybody's like that, right? Well, I, I think that they got caught up in other things of the instrument. Right. And, and, <laughs> and, and that yeah. works for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. what's working for me is that, uh, uh, and fortunately I've had a little son, so you can't see me blush. Yeah. But uh, when someone plays a record that I'm on, those people who know the music, they know who that is. Right. They know your sound and I'm in a second. And I've now worked for that since back then. Yeah. You know, and I'm working on that as we speak from last night's concert. Can I, now I've got a big band of 16 pieces and it's just me. Can I make the same kind of sound for the three guys as I can for 16? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, do you think you can? Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, check me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's what interesting is also about about this about tone, 
you know, of it's, the, of, per, so it's personal, right? Of the instrument itself, yes, right, and, and your hands, and yeah. what kind of strings you have, and right, what consistency you bring to the instrument. It's the same thing, night in and night out. So the instrument, in this case, bass resolves and sounds based on what you make it do. But, but your bass, that bass that you have now, yeah, is for sixty years, sixty years, yeah. and the strings you use the same strings all the time. Well, they've they've evolved over the years. That's new material, and then they get better, but, but basically, right. yeah. But you know, but the feel of it, that you know, every little scratch and sound. I like that feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that what's interesting for me about about jazz in that, like you guys, you know, you do like nine records a day, you know, something. It's just the, the yeah. amount of of recording Playing, too. But yeah. that's it, the playing. Yeah. Yeah. But but there's something about the the rawness of jazz production, certainly early on. Sure. Where you're not you're not you're not screwing with it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to get the pure sound. Absolutely. So you're looking for spaces that give you the pure sound. Yes. And and that's why you know I imagine that you have you know like Van Gelder it was magic place. Yes, to praise him. <laughs> yeah, magic place. Yeah. Why? Well, he understood how to record the instrument. Mm. You know, I would go out to Rudy's in the early '60s on Saturdays. Yeah. We'd spend three or four hours. Rudy wanted to know how do I record the bass? Yeah. How best can I record it? Where in my studio room? Should the bass player be in this room yeah. to make the bass sound most effective sonically? Yeah. He wasn't worried about the notes. So he wanted the sound of the instrument. Yeah. We would f experiment with different pickups because that was in the earlier days of pickup development. Yeah. He had all these microphones. And so he'd put a pickup on the instrument yeah. as opposed to a mic on it? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. we'd do all that on and sure, off. Sure. Microphone two feet away, four feet away. Oh, so you really This kind of microphone. Yeah, yeah, find what areas. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, the, what's the plane of sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would spend like three or three hours for about four or five months just figuring out where in this room with this gear would the bass sound best. Right. And once we kind of doped that out, my job was to make sure my hands were in condition, the bass was play was was a good instrument. Yeah. I remembered we got this sound by me doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I must do the same X, Y, and Z for the sound of this record that we agree is what we want to hear. Right. With Rudy tomorrow. Right. And then the following day. Yeah. And then the following day. Right. Here we are at night it's two thousand twenty two. I'm still doing that kind of concept. Well, I know. I I noticed in the uh, in the doc, you know, when you were recording, they showed you in the, in the in the booth doing that. I don't know who that who you were working with there, mm -hmm. but you were working on a take. You were emotionally exhausted, and but the like, I noticed an intensity that you know you're you're very hard on yourself. I expect uh, I expect me to deliver a certain level of performance, man. I get it. I get it. But it, 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 do you ever like you, you know give yourself a break? You want to have lunch. <laughs> 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 yeah all right yeah but so that sound that you were able to get they you know it seems to me like and, and i don't always understand tone but like if i listen to the really early stuff where you're kind of figuring shit out mm -hmm. and then when you 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 know everything starts to take shape you know the, mm -hmm. the, the tone of the notes your runs yeah, yeah. You know, the sliding business yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. i mean do you remember those moments where you figured out how to slide into things and do that stuff well i, I think the issue uh, marcus is it's not so much doing it yeah is where does it belong in the music? Okay, yeah. And my constant concern is am I doing it in the wrong tune? Mm. Is it the wrong set of chords? How do you determine that stuff? Playing with the off the artist? Do, doing it and find out that it didn't work. I didn't right. really hear it too much isolated, just me. Right. I got to play with you mm -hmm. to find out did, did, did this slide affect him and is it in the wrong place? Yeah. Is it the wrong key? Is it too. Does it fit too, the song? Is it, is it too gauche? Right. And is it too aggressive? What's that thing on the top that like that? It's, it's extension. It allows oh. the bass to go down to like low C. Okay. Which you, is the, can you pull on it too? And yeah, yeah. This is the first up. one. Yours is the first one? Yeah. You invented it? Well, some guy in Cincinnati invented it. And he said, come, come try this out. And I said, well, if I don't like it, we'll fix it. He said, we can put it back the way it was. So I went down there, man, and yeah. he put it on and the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen it it's before. It's called an extension. A lot of dudes use it now? Oh yeah, uh, uh, there's a clamp that opens it and closes to the open seat. I saw it. It closes yeah. it on the fret on the first first first, first fret, basically. the nut. Yeah, yeah. and that on the open seat is nice nice sound. And, but I think my friends tell me that that's the inspiration for electric bass players adding an extension to their instrument. Some of them have five strings. Yeah, yeah. I, I got four is enough, man. Yeah, I me. talked to a Thundercat. You listen to Thundercat? Yeah, a, a fabulous guy, man. Yeah, nice guy. Sweet Anthony guy. Jackson. Yeah. Steve Bailey, all those guys, they just played just out of this world, man. Well, so 
when you like i noticed that there are guys that you've played a lot with mm -hmm. like i mean like 50 records worth yeah yeah with so i assume that these relationships because you know you're talking as as a, as a guy who who does his thing focuses on the notes you know wants to show up and, and do the right notes for the right gig but i have to assume that over time even seeing you and uh, herbie talk you know on in the dock on zoom like you, you've done like 80 records with him mm -hmm. one way or another yeah yeah so you must have uh an evolving conversation with these guys that yes. go way back yes like in in terms of 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 drummers you know in terms of like what well tony williams and the quintet but then then there was other guys too that you played like you know, Grady, grady tate and and, and so uh, many Connie Kay and philly and, joe jones yeah. right yeah. so do you is there something that happens between you and all these different guys yes where you, what could two th 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 yeah. three, three things happen right I bring a love, a, a reputation, yeah, of uh, 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 being able to deliver whatever the delivery yeah, is. Yeah. Secondly, I understand that when I go to these projects, yeah, I leave my ego at home and bring a spare set of ears so I can hear in stereo. I want to hear everything that these guys do, who I'm affecting, what they do. Yeah. And the fourth thing, third thing is, is when I walk in the door of these studios, Mark, or these clubs. Yeah, those guys know that the level of music just went up thirty five percent because <laughs> I'm there. Yeah, yeah, and I can only get that respect by delivering each time the bass comes out of that case. Right, and that's what makes the drive in me with these responsibilities that I've accepted. Right, be in the place that these various acts who are not jazz bands call me because they think that this person me can add a certain level of difference to their project that gives them that special spice that they think their project can only get if this guy is on it. You mean like, you mean like uh, pop acts? Yeah. Like, you know, Paul Simon, Robert, yeah. Roberta Flack, Tribe Called Quest, Yes, whoever. yes. Because that, that Paul Simon album is my favorite record. Yeah. And you're all over that thing. Yeah, and what amazes me, they have other choices, man. Sure, man. And I, 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 I never worried about why they picked me. Yeah. I just got a job to do. Can I make this guy appreciate he made the right choice by doing what I think is going to make him really sound better because I'm standing there. Right, but you know that about yourself. Yes. You're not saying like, well, I, I, no, I hope no. I can give them the sound they want. No, no, no. You're no, just I'm, saying like, you know, I hope I can, that, that what I do fits this thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So when do you start, like, you know, just in terms of evolving, you know, the form, you know, jazz in and of itself. Yeah. Right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're... You're an architect of modern jazz, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when does that? When do you feel that shift starting to happen? Because you you're recording that that solo record is like your second or third solo, the the Uptown Conversation. Mm -hmm. But but like how it, it seems to me that jazz, although reflecting the times it, it's of, still floats above the time. Mm -hmm. Like it's its own different zone. But there's all these things going on within the music, yes. you know, certainly in, in the in mid 60s. Mm -hmm. So who like, you know, I, I know you play with Miles, but I also know you play with Freddie Hubbard a ton and Lee yeah. Morgan, who I love. Yeah, and Art Farmer. Yeah. And Chet Baker. Chet Baker. That's yeah. a, a whole other thing. Right. Yeah. Yes. But this is all moving the music forward. Yes. Yes. So which conversations with which guys, you know, were, did you find the most provocative to you? Well, you know, I, I think that's an easy question to answer that I never really answer. Yeah. Because that implies that the names I don't mention who were affected. Sure, my, I get it. Yeah, yeah, sure. That the, that the other guys were lesser influential on me. Right. And that's not the case at all. So I have to find, I have to learn, I've learned a, a better way to answer that is that each of those trumpet players, for example, yeah. Art, Chad, Miles, yeah. Freddie, yeah. you know, uh, Ernie Royal, Snooky Young, the big uh -huh. band guys yeah, I played yeah, with, you know, yeah. Emmett Berry. Yeah. Each one of those guys were a teacher. Right. And my job is to understand what the classwork is. What is it, though, with a trumpet player? Because I don't know. I don't play jazz. You it, know, it, like... it's, just, it, well, it, it's, it's a lot of factors physically with those guys and lips and chops and stuff sure. like that. But I think they all have a certain need to know if they don't play, who will pick up that slot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Clark Terry, for example. Yeah. You know, who's the guy who they can hire that if he doesn't play for three notes can make his three notes not missed? Right. And I've been able to find out what note I can play. Sometimes silence, though, right? Yes. Yeah. 
I can determine that with, You're with the this guy. guy. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. I'm the person who who turns a dial, right. turns a nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and certain guys respond quicker than Don Ellis. Yeah. He kind of like played outside all the time. But he's was, a big band guy too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. out in Cal. He's out in the California. After yeah. He left in New York at that record called uh, "How Time Flies" with Jackie uh-huh. Viar and Charlie Percy, uh, '62. Uh, but I, 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 I try to sense where they think that they want the music to go, and if they don't play this measure or this four and four notes, if I if I play two notes, is that more than enough? Yeah. Right, and right. they trust in my sense of paying attention, yeah, of being sober, yeah, of being on time, bringing this reputation You're to the, the day. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yeah, man. I mean, back in the day, it was all like, okay, uh, can we, we, got, we can count on one guy. Yes, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's sure. a society at the time, man. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, can I find the right notes or the right intensity by my presence? Mm. Say, oh, guys. Enough, okay? We, you guys are fooling around. Let's get this party started quick. Two, three, four, bam. So did, were you, sometimes were you the guy in the room where they were sort of like, no, I guess we got to work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And with that comes pressure to deliver. Yeah. So I have to be able to maintain my stats with these guys. Yeah. Because they're controlling how much work everybody gets. Yeah. And when you're playing, like when, you know, when you're working, because you also, like I'm, I'm, I'm late to appreciating uh, jazz guitar for mm-hmm. some reason. Like because you know I'm, I'm kind of a rock guy, a blues guy. You, you know, once I got into jazz, it was all about horns and, and yeah, yeah. the the quintets or the you know the four guys. But you work a lot with guitar guys. Yes, yes. Like you know, you I mean, you did a, like a hundred records with George Benson. Yeah, and Jim Hall. Yeah, and, and just just lovely people who I learned from who allowed me. To teach them what was necessary. Like, what is that? What is that? Like, the, well, you're dealing with an instrument that has at least four of the same strings. Yeah. So, but like, what is it? What's it, the big difference between working with guitar band leaders and horn leaders? I think the difference is the sounds of the instrument. Yeah. The the the, the power, the physical power, right. of the and, and once I understand what the physical range is yeah. that they can be. So my job is to fit in this range. Where you hear every note I play, yeah, I don't care what they play, man. You hear each of one of my notes. You always do. Yeah, I, that's my job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's why they hire me. Yeah, I want to hear all your notes you're playing. Well, here's here's here's, here's, here's five notes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know, they're I, playing chords. Yeah, or whatever. And I'm trying to find out what note of your chord or your line do you need to have to fulfill the re- the requirements of that chord you just played. Yeah. And when I get that right, man, the room just stops. Yeah. Like last night. Yeah. Which set? The, the, the first set. Yeah, I was there. The, 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 we did uh, the first song of the night. Yeah. It's, it's gotten set the tone for the whole night. Yeah. And, and I found some notes, an order of notes, that the band kept playing, but I could see the eyes go like this, man. They opened up to and, and, and the awareness of, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> this, magic thing? This, this is this magic. This is a magic night. It's taking place right here, right now, because of those three notes this bass player played. Uh-huh. That, Mark, is an amazing feeling. Yeah. But I don't want to know why it happens. I just want to enjoy being swamped with this great feeling of... Whew. Well, I think that, like, I think wanting to know why it happens and, and, and chasing it as... as Important. That, uh, yeah, as being part of your character is problematic, right? Because cause you can't chase it. No. Yeah, I mean, you can only work for it, right? And then if it happens, it's a gift. But if you're trying to make it happen every night... You know, I don't know. Well, we we'll try every night to get that special zone. You know, no, no, yeah, but like you know, I, I, you know, and I'm, I'm not. I'm just. I'm trying to make a, a connection between like this idea, like that feeling that happens. I mean, you know, it's special. Yeah, you know, it's not. You know, it's not going to happen from the second you start playing every night to the end of the show. But if you're lucky, you're in a pocket. You know, for a third of the show, or mm-hmm. it just when it happens mm-hmm. and you can realize it. Mm-hmm. But I think knowing it's special and knowing that it's not necessarily attainable for the entire every show mm. is a, is responsible yeah well wait wait a minute uh, 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 you know speaking of me earlier we talked about the being in touch in touch with the audience conversationally yeah, yeah. you know what i decided to do mark along the way is in, in my little pattern with the audience not encouraging them to talk back but just to hear me with a voice sure verbalizing some commentary yeah. uh 
I, I mentioned occasionally that we've been, we, the band, yeah. at that moment, whatever yeah. it is, have been doing this band job for a really long time. And, and, uh, for example, a trio from Russell and Donald last night. And I explained to the audience that we try to play our best and discover stuff every night. Yeah. But there's a moment in time that when we reach a special plane. Right. And, and uh, sometimes, as you people, audience, don't see us every night, every set, that that growth, that level of constantly experimenting, you don't really see that. You see the results of that over here somewhere. Sure. Well, you have just seen the results of all our trials and efforts right now for the last set. Right. To pull them into our growth and, and that we recognize that we just passed a special rainbow. Yeah. Right. You know, and... and for the first time. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or for, 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 for them, the first time. Sure. And for us, another return to... This is what this shit is all the about. The zone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think what like what that. Was, yeah, 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 that. Well, I mean, I think what I was getting at in in sort of a roundabout way was like you know in dealing with the fact that you approach this you know you know practically you know responsibly soberly mm -hmm. and and you're putting that work in like that and you're and you're grounded in that way you're foundational in that you know you're you're responsible yeah. and you're not you know high. Because it feels to me that, like in any business, whether it's comedy or jazz or something else, that the same thing that drives dudes to stay high to get to a place uh, is 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 a lack of accepting that the special place comes when you earn it, and and you're trying to sort of make it happen mm -hmm. to be in a different zone, and it, and it kills you. Okay, well, you know, just to kind of go back, I, I'm I don't want the audience, your listeners, yeah. to feel that I'm necessarily uh, uh, combining or uh, saying that the, the, the drug scene or the, the, the need for a narcotic assistance yeah. is what this music is all about and that my compatriots, whoever they were or are, yeah. were so involved in the drug scene that I saved the date. No, I'm not saying that at no, all. No, 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 right, yeah, yeah. But I've seen guys come to the date just fucked up, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I would get called on the date because the guy knew that I was the guy who was gonna be high, sober enough Yeah. That these guys had so much, such a high regard for my ability to yeah. play the instrument, yeah, and help them as the only solid, so, so, sober guy on the fucking date, yeah, they counted on me, yeah, to, hold to it help, together. to help, to help. They counted the the, yeah, the, the yeah. users, right? They kind to help them retain a sense of nowness, yeah, 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 that the drug didn't really give them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and you didn't, you don't like doing those dates, or you? Yeah. I do because oh, I got better, man. <laughs> I got, I got. I was even more responsible. Big, big responsibility. Yes, I'm kind of weird. All these, bad, these, guys. these guys are big motherfuckers, man. They play great, man. Right. And I'm the only bass player in the band. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. get this mother. Yeah. Let's okay. Go. Let's stop this sucker. I'll hold, uh, uh, yes. I'll hold it together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I said, well, man, when he walks in the door, man, the day the date goes up forty five percent because he's what he's here. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. And so, that helps me get to wherever I am. When, when right, it. it's like a, it's like extra training. You yeah, gotta work yeah. extra hard. Yeah, it's like and you, and you other can, homework. Right, and you can listen. Like you probably know, there's certain records where you're like, you know, Please. if I wasn't, <laughs> if I wasn't there. Please, yeah. That's, <laughs> we don't want to go that far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's some. I could tell you some stories at another time. Yeah, uh, that's. Yeah, that's just how you could do. Wow. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. like, how do we even get a record out of that? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, I bet, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, bet. Yeah. So when you play with, I imagine you know a lot of times guys bring you in to just do what you do. They're not going to tell you what to do. Yes. But there are guys that are more collaborative. Yes. Where you've got to learn. Yes. They send me some music to look at at my house. Okay. Yeah. And then when you get there, I just you, play you, what they wrote. Right. But yeah. are there other times where because like you know I don't know if a lot of people know this. I mean you know you know jazz if if you you don't know how to take it in a lot of people think like yeah they're just up there riffing. But Absolutely. You, yeah. But they, but you're not. No. Obviously. There's a concept. There's a yeah, plan in place. Of course. How much of that though? Like like let's just talk about like Freddie Hubbard, like that guy. Like was that all on paper? It depends on what you talk about. Yeah. I, I tell you what, yeah. a good example is a, a Red Clay, that record. Okay. He brought in a melody. Yeah. You know, and, and he said, well, Ron, I got this song. He goes to the piano. Who played, he played really good piano. Yeah. He played this melody for the piano. Yeah. He said, but, uh, you know, I need, I need an intro to this tune. Can you make an intro to this yeah. tune? Yeah, yeah. I said, well, Freddie, where's it going to go? Yeah. I'm introducing something, Freddie. Right. What am I introducing? Yeah. What does my melody 
that I'm making up. What am I setting up? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. So oh, it's done about this, man. He plays it. Yeah. It's basically like Sonny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. So I said, well, I, I'm mumbling to my head. Does, does this work? Yeah. As it turned out, that was the intro for the tune, and everybody who played bass had to learn that line because they went to Freddie Hubbard's tune. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's yeah. collaboration. As you speak of, is that that level of collaboration between composer and bass player in this case? Sure, absolutely. And then, and then that that's an interesting thing too, because of how much bass you've played on how many records is that you put that out into the world, and then exponentially, hundreds of bass players. Thousands. <laughs> Thousands are like, yes. what's that riff? Yeah. That's a Ron Carter riff. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, it makes me kind of blessed to be responsible for that, yeah, but I am. Man. Yeah. yeah. And you must, be, you must be sampled a million times. Yeah. And I'm not loving it. Yeah. So when, all right, so like there was some footage or some sound in the documentary, you know, in when you're talking to Miles about getting to a place. Mm -hmm. Now, like I just listened to Nefertiti, like that, that riff is a unique riff mm -hmm. right now because it seems like you know the the rhythm is being played by the horns and you guys are going at it underneath it mm -hmm. was now now what's the discussion around something like that well it's two three things yeah and and, and and i hope this is one this seems to be the most critical one of that record that yeah. concept where they let the tape roll from the time we walked in the studio till we left okay you know miles was asking us for help yeah he was asking us hey man what can we do for this song right uh, my point is that he was open to suggestions from their band members. Was that not common with well, him? No one knew that. Oh, no yeah. one. He thought he was the almighty prince. Yeah. <laughs> and he would go into the date and just play what he played. Right. Well, I'm, this this, this pre-recording conversation. Yeah. It shows how open he was. Yeah. To asking for help from the other four guys in the band. Yeah. On how this particular song, Nefertiti, yeah. would be successful musically. Right. Okay. It's an amazing view of him. Yeah. And I'm sorry people slept on that because they got this view of Miles being whatever he is. He's an independent guy of everything. No. Miles How could looked he be? to us for help. How could he be? If he's changing like he's changing, then he can't but, do that. But, about but no one sees that. All they just see, weird. All, they, all they see that he has changed on his own. No. But that particular CD of, yeah. uh, of, of, of uh, information, it showed Miles asking Tony about a rhythm. Or yeah, yeah. Herbie, how to revoice this chord. Can, Herbie, can you play this voice like this? Or, Wayne, Wayne, can you, Wayne, help me with this, yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. He would say, oh, Ron, can you play this kind of rhythm? I said, well, Miles is a little bit awkward for this tempo if you can slow it down or whatever my comments were. He took them as another way to help his project, uh -huh. Nefertiti, uh -huh. be successful. Uh -huh. Huh. You know, yeah, he was collaborative. He's asking for some help. Sure, man. Yeah, and the band who sees this giant asking them to help this project be successful, that raises their level of their presence. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of course. And how important they are to the success of this music. Yeah, because they they without they, him created without, without, with this, him. without this music and helpers. Yeah, the boss has no help. That's right. But you probably work with guys that just, you know, say, you know, shut up, do this, you know, do that, do this. And, well, to them, you shut up, I don't talk to those guys. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, you know, yeah. there's no collaboration. You're yeah. just there doing a job. And I don't mind that because that's part of the job. Right. You know? Right. I did a project uh, last week where the, the, the singer sung for like three minutes on the track mm. with a keyboard piano in the background. He yeah. wanted me to add a bass, part, bass line to his song. Yeah. I said, well, send me the lead sheet for the melody. Yeah. And, and send me uh, you singing, and I'll help you with a, a project, uh, my bass line that yeah. will kind of fill it out for you yeah so i gave him two or three versions of this track and yeah. he was thrilled that i could do that without being in the studio i said well man you see me this three minute track of course it's easier now because i have all your choices already laid out for me right i'm not yeah. i'm not waiting for you to decide yeah i'm yeah. telling you this is what i think works for this song that's great and the guy said wow man how do you do that i, yeah. said, I don't know but i like it <laughs> <laughs> i've been doing it a long time yeah that too <laughs> <laughs> you know so with the uh, you know it, it, in, during the pandemic, it, it it seemed like you were you you were probably more in touch with some cats than you were you yeah. know, outside the pandemic. Well, you know, we, it was easy because we were all not busy. Yeah, yeah. We all had at home twiddling our thumbs, yeah, know, waiting for some waiting for it to be over. Right. And, and and sometimes people found things to do, others found nothing to do. But like, do you yeah. like? Are you like? Because I know you know when you work with dudes, you know, on wet on records or whatnot, it doesn't necessarily mean. That you guys are, are buddies, mm -hmm. but it seems like uh, are you friends with Herbie? Do you oh, guys? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. friends with all those guys on those oh, yeah. records, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's not one person who I made a record with 
who have any kind of ill feelings. Yeah, yeah. No. It's all about trying to find the best note to make those guys sure. miss me when I'm not there. Yeah. But you, do you talk about, you know, stuff? Yeah, we have, we have a life. Yeah, yeah. And we share our life. Oh, Herbie talks good. about this. Uh, oh, good. Uh, Wayne talks about that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. J.J. Johnson talks about this. Sure, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Cedar Walton talks about this. <laughs> Billy, they all have lives outside of this bandstand project. Sure, and now everyone's getting older. And because we understand the other life that we have, it's easy to put the stuff in place on the bandstand. Yeah. And you, can, you can feel, I know this person from his day, days. Well, there's a weird days. thing. It's a depth to it. There's a depth to it. Like you know, even like you know, even in this, you know, the squeak of the, you know, even how you're holding a string. Yeah, you know, as you get, you know, more wise, more deep, more older, that you know, those things ring with an authenticity of what you are in that moment. I'm getting older and wiser. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. seem like it. Yeah, man. And you're fortunate. You know, you got your head together. Right, well, I'm loving every minute that I get a chance to play one more note, one more good note. Absolutely. And do you like? Either, there was a kind of a, a a touching moment, you know, where where like it, it resonated with me only because I, you know I've heard it before in 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 the way not in that way, but like where you wonder not uh, not about the future because of you know you per se, but like you know you need to keep working in order for the music to survive yes that the responsibility of being one of the uh you know architects of this music that's always struggled for survival yes that there that as you get older no matter how exhausted you get that you feel that the responsibility is still on you absolutely yes that's you a know, heavy weight man. It, it, the guy said man why do you keep doing this i said well man there's somebody's got to keep carrying the fucking flag right and right now one of those flag carriers is me still and I don't mind sharing what I know that when I put the flag down, this guy's going to pick it or this gal's going to pick it up and take it somewhere else. You feel confident Great. about that? Absolutely. Yeah? You see you see a whole new... Because it feels to me like there's there's always been a, 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 you know, a, a jazz world. Yeah, Mark, somewhere there's someone who's already developing my concept. Uh-huh. He or she. Right. All I can do is keep playing a concept. Yeah. Probably in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, they're there too, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And they have wonderful players over there. Yeah. To, to take this note that I played and move it somewhere else, somewhere else in, in, in their spectrum of location of a song. Yeah. That's what the evolvement is. That's what developing is. That's what gets, keeps the bass lines active, even if I'm not playing another note for the next two or three months if I'm off, whatever. Yeah. But I think we have responsibility to continue to propagandize the music mm. to assist to being that fertile ground for people who want to find what next can we do to help evolve this music that we love and what we call jazz. Mm -hmm. I like to be in that position. It's a little embarrassing to be one of those guys. I'm just kind of the guy who's known behind the palm tree. But bass players' notes control a lot of stuff. Sure. And, and once bass players understand that, yeah. the development of the bass is going to keep getting way beyond my imagination. Yeah. Break. Bring it on. Let me see how sure. that. Let me see what you guys did with it. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. What about the guys who, like a lot of the guys you're associated with, like there, there's some dudes that like seem to to do another world of jazz. You know, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A free form, more free form sure. stuff. Like uh, I listened to uh, Albert Ayler. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Don Ayler. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I listened to uh, uh, I, not so much Coltrane, but Ornette. I listened to Ornette, yeah, yeah. Cecil yeah, yeah. Taylor. Now these guys, how do they fit in to to the world, to your world? Well, they don't do what I do, right? But I can do what they do. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You know, and, and I appreciate their contribution <laughs> to another sound, another avenue to do this music. Yeah, you know, uh, shouldn't I, it seems? I've always heard that the argument was like they should be able to do what you do first. <laughs> And then go do that. I, I don't get to that level of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Can, do you like to listen to that? Yeah. You do. They, they come up with combinations of notes that haven't occurred to me. Yeah. Just like I have a combination that they hadn't occurred to them. Yeah. They want to know if I'm playing, if they're playing their, their free free sounds and stuff, sure. they hear a certain tonal center. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I hear one too, but it's different than theirs. Yeah, yeah. And like we were both saying, well, man, how could you hear that out of this set? And we hear this out of the same set. It's that kind of curiosity that appeals to me when I hear these various, clearly different concepts. Sure. Menu on, this, on the same menu. Yeah. You know, and, and I said, well, man, 
how come I need this spice for the sound, but you find that spice is better for you? Yeah. It amazes me that it works. Yeah, right, a- right. And the jazz, right. the jazz community, they're the last guys to complain about being different. They want to they do what they do, but they understand there's another area of availability to them. Right. And it, but it's interesting because that, that in and of itself, the nature of that is it, it does not, is not founded in the consistency that you create. That's right. I get it. Yeah. That you're, you're going to find a note. But you know they're going to go all over the place, and you're going to be like, "What the hell is happening here?" And yes. like, oh, there's a note. Yes. But with, with with what you do, you're sort of like, "It's a good melody," and they're like, "Oh shit!" You're yeah, right. There's one you yeah, need. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I, I, those guys play great. I love listening to like the William Parker, for example. Yeah. They had they do sounds of the bass that never occurred to me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, man, how the fuck did you hear that? Yeah, and does yeah, and do you do you feed? Does it feed you? In a way, yes, because another level of seeing how the bass works, man. Well, let me ask you. The, I the, like that kind of stuff. It's great. It's creativity. So the other, the, I guess, the last question really is like, you know, I heard, I, I don't, I think it was Miles quoted about this thing because it sort of changed my life about how I approach my dumb guitar and, and just how I approach things in general. Is the idea is that I don't remember who was talking about. Maybe it was maybe it was Herbie in that uh, documentary about Blue Note that mm-hmm. Sophie Huber did. Where, where, you know, he, like, he hit the wrong note. And I guess Miles said, well, there is no wrong note. You just follow that note mm-hmm. and, and, and support it somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that just a jazz concept? No, I, I think what we, I, I can't answer for him. Right. Uh, my, my response to that kind of concept yeah. is that when I play a note that doesn't really fit yeah. here, right, X, X, Y, Z, right. maybe I should wait until ABC comes back and try it ABC. Oh, okay. I never put it in the trash can. Right. There's right. a place for it. I just haven't found and, and the same what, piece of music? You yeah. Think? Okay. Or maybe a different piece. Right. My curiosity for me is that it isn't that it's a wrong note. It's a right note in the wrong location. <laughs> yeah. And my yeah, job yeah. is to find a better location for this great note. Right. Clearly, that's not it. <laughs> but but is the, no, the note's always relative to something. Absolutely. Right. And the environment changes. Right. Every, every chorus. Yeah, the volume, the intensity, the intonation. Yeah, the sounds. Sure. I learned a lot just watching the documentary. From what uh, you know, I, I it was in that the conversation you had with Batista. Yeah, that, yeah, that, John uh, with John. Yeah, that uh, you know that the 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 bass's job is 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 to find you know is, is there's harmony in that job. Yeah, yeah, and and there's a rhythm and 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 timing. Yes, that's critical to that. Stuff. Right, but the harmony thing is really what defines. The jazz bass, in a way, I, and that, that's correct as a singular instrument. Yes, and I hope that bass players understand that. Yeah, I hope if I'm bringing, if I'm, if I'm a, a accredited anything for bass line building, yeah, it's the fact that my bass lines are melodies in themselves. Right, right. And if you take everybody else on top, my bass line should sustain your interest. Yeah, if bass players can understand that option that I'm trying to play every night, yeah, the bass will take another step. And yeah. there's some good players who are waiting for something to do. Just do that. Just take that out. There you go. That's the advice. And how'd you pick these guys you're with now? They follow my instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Malone seems like a character. Well, he's a wonderful player with a great sense of humor. Yeah. And Don was kind of new to New York for the past four or five years. But boy, he's a wonderful, he's a piano player to Donald look out Vega. for. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed it a great deal. Thank I you. enjoyed talking to you. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Hey, man. Yeah. They can't see me shake hands, but we're doing it right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It.